Okay, in an earlier video, you heard me say that I don't think you should use replicated databases with Power BI. And then I kind of briefly went through what you should do instead. But I thought I'd make a bigger video, a longer video, to show you exactly how to do it manually. Now, Simon Whiteley has videos on how to build an Azure Synapse serverless SQL pool database automatically and keep them in sync. And I highly recommend watching his video. I'll link it in the uh, description of this video so that you have that. Um, but for now, I just wanted to go through the manual steps uh, briefly so that you could see you know, exactly what you have to do to be successful here. So again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build our own database, put our own objects in it, have our own credentials on it, build a Power BI report on it, publish that Power BI report to the service, change the credentials, and then watch data refresh working in Power BI in the portal. That's the goal here. So this might be a little bit, um, I hope it's not super boring. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time editing it. I just want to get it out there so that if somebody was interested in solving these problems and being successful with Azure Synapse and Power BI, they had um, uh, uh, something to watch and, and somewhere to kind of point them and get them going, okay? All right, so the first thing we do is we create a database, um, and you can see that right here. Then we use that database to make sure that all of our other scripts are using it afterward. There it is, right? Now we're going to create a Power BI user account with a password. I'm going to pause the video for just a second, put in a password, and then I'll come back. Okay, promise. Okay, now we've got the login account. Now we build a user account for that login, and that user is going to exist in the sales DM database, just like it does for a normal SQL server. And you could see that that worked, okay? Now we're gonna add it to DB Owner. We don't have to do that. I'm just doing it because I'm lazy probably, but we could just as easily put that into Data Reader or uh, a custom role would probably be even more preferable. Okay, once DB Owner is created, we need to create a scoped credential, a database scope credential. What this does is it connects a shared access signature with the ADLS storage account with my Azure Synapse serverless SQL pool uh, database, the database you just saw me create. So what I'm trying to do is get file access to the Parquet files that are in ADLS so that I can use them in my table definitions here. Now, how do I get that shared access signature? Well, if I go back to my in the Azure portal, I go to my Synapse workspace, you can see my primary ADLS Gen 2 account is Ike Data Lake. So if I go back to the portal and I look at shared access signatures, I can create a shared access signature with very specific permissions to that ADLS storage account. I can create a start date and an end date. You want it sometime in the future. And then I can um, generate the SAS token. And down here, I get the SAS token that I can generate, right? And, and I can use that, right? Uh, OK, so that SAS token then gets copied here under this secret for this, you know, you know, I'm calling it SAS token my storage and I'm putting it here. So we go ahead and do that and run that and that gets created. Okay. Now, the next thing that we need to do is make sure that that token can be used by the Power BI user that I had earlier. So you just run that and that builds that. Okay. Um, the next thing we need to do is make sure that these objects that are in the automatic, the replicated database in the serverless SQL pool are in my new database. Okay, so the easy way to do that is if I go into SSMS and I go to the replicated database, what we need are three different things. We need these external tables, we need these data sources, and we need this Parquet file definition. And we actually need them in reverse order. We probably need the Parquet definition first, then the data sources, then the table definition. So what you do is you just right click and script this out. And this thing you wanna run over in your brand new database, right? Um, then what uh, if you want the data source, right? You just script it out. And we want that data source in the other thing. And then finally, what you want is the table definition and you run the table definition in the other data source with some modifications. 
Okay, so now that you know how to get the code for this, so you're not writing the code by hand, let's go back and take a look at the modifications. Okay, so here's the external file format that we talked about. Look, I can run that, and now I get that. Okay, now here's the data source. So this data source, I am notice that they had their data sources all messed up when they're naming. You know, the replicated one is automatic and they're terrible. But I'm calling mine DS dim date. And I'm saying for DS dim date, the location is the dim date folder in my in my ADLS storage account. And I'm saying my credential equals SAS token my storage. That credential right there is that thing that you saw me create earlier, SAS token my storage, right? So I'm creating one for dim date, for dim customer, for dim products, and fax sales, right? So I highlight these. Uh oh, sorry. Do, 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 do. Okay, and I run those. All right. Now that that's created, right? Okay. Now what I want to do is build the customers table based on the specific data source. So I'm saying this customers table is the data source dim customers, you know, that that we defined up here right at the top, right? That's this file path that's using that credential, right? That's why we have the SAS token. The credential is hitting that file path. That file path is now uh, connecting this metadata table definition with that parquet file. And so I do it for dim customers. I do it for dim date. Here's the dim date external table going to DS dim date. Here's the products going to DS dim products. Here's fact going to DS dim fact. So I highlight these table definition creations and I run them. Okay, that's it. Now, if I want to verify that this stuff is working, what I can do is go back here, refresh my databases. This sales DM is the one that I built that you watched me build right in front of you. I can open up the tables. I can see underneath external tables. I can right click and I can query it. And running, boom, and it's working. Okay, so what happened? Look, here is, here are the, pardon me, here are the external data sources that you watched me create. And here's the external file format that you watched me create. And now I have a data and table structure all in metadata without moving the parquet files all around that can be used inside Power BI. And you know that I've got the correct credentials that are working too, right? Okay, so that's all great. What does that mean? That means that I can open up Power BI. Let's open up Power BI, yeah, right? Now, if I'm going to use Synapse, I always go to More. These were in beta for a long time, but now they're now they're available to us. Come on, get data. Oh, there we go. Okay, I go to Azure, and it's Azure Synapse Analytics SQL, and I click Connect. Now, what's the name of the server? Well, I go back, not there. I go back here to Synapse, right? The name of the server is the Serverless SQL Endpoint, so I click that. And I put that there. The name of the database you watched me create it was Sales DM. I click OK. And then it, let's see what happens. Boop. All right. So I'm logged into Azure already, and it knew my credentials already. So it said it logged me in automatically. So I click on DIM customers, DIM date, DIM products, fax sales. Okay. And I click load. Okay. What I wanted to know is please give me this, the customer city that has the most sales. And let's put it in a bar chart. There we go. Okay, so you can look at our sales and you can see, you know, London, Wollston, you know, all have about 150K, right? Down to 100K, right? And uh, if we want, cared about kind of formatting this a little bit, um, we could kind of do something real, just real quick. Well, at data labels. So now our data labels uh, show, you know, real numbers here, right? So, okay, that's a pretty good report. This is sales by city, right? So what we'll do is we'll just publish sales by city. Yeah, we'll put it in my workspace for now. 
That's fine. And here's sales by city. Okay. Now, ideally, our, our database is updating all of the time, right? So we would want this thing to get updated all the time. So how would we make sure that this thing was getting refreshed? Okay. Well, we could go to my workspace real quick, and we could go see sales by city, which is this one right here. And we can go into the data set, and we should go to settings. So once we're in settings, let's make sure that the credentials are good. And it says, no, the credentials are not good. So what we should do is make sure that it's using the right Power BI uh, credentials. So what we're doing is we're going to put the Power BI user account here, the password here, and we'll click sign in. And now it worked. So great. All right. Once we have the correct credentials and we've specified, we know that they're correct, we can now schedule a refresh. So we can say, click it on, make it daily at a time, do it every hour or however, whatever frequency we want to do automatic refreshes. But first it requires us to get the data source credentials right. You can use Active Directory if you want, but you can use um, SQL authentication the way I told you about in this video. Once that's happened, this will automatically uh, refresh on a schedule, but let's just show the refresh real quick. So just to kind of show you this, um, do, do, do. Do, do, do. let's go back to the workspace. Okay. Let's go to um, sales by city. Let's go to the report. Okay. What we want to do is we want to see this report get updated. Now I'm going to do something kind of bogus. What I'm going to do is come into um, my, this is the Python script I used to build that table. And I'm going to go to line total and I'm just going to double everything because then we can see it really easily. So I'm going to run that again. Okay, so I edited the video so that you don't have to wait the five minutes for my session to start and for this to run. But once, if the session started, this thing runs in like 30 seconds. It's not that slow, but um, because the session, you know, shut down all the clusters, it takes a minute for the clusters to come back up. Okay, so this ran. We've got the the doubling. Okay, we come back to our report. It still says the old numbers here. Right, but if we go and refresh the workspace, refresh the data set. So, pardon me. So we go back down to sales by city. We refresh this. It refreshes pretty quickly. We go back to the report, and then and then what you'll find is that our numbers double the way we expected it to. So now we've got you know all new numbers. So you can see with this example that we were able to change the data, refresh it because we had the right credentials. We could have put that on a schedule and see the updated numbers uh, coming into Power BI and the portal. So we did it. That wasn't that bad. Hopefully this helps you and gets you moving. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.